While early victories over Outer Rim warlords like Sander Dalvardis and the taking of staging points in the core like Brantal positioned the New Republic as a force to be reckoned with under the leadership of Mon Mothma politically and Admiral Akbar militarily, one major goal stood between them and widespread acceptance of their claim to be the legitimate galactic government and true successor state to the Old Republic, the traditional capital of Coruscant. While Imperial Warlords in the northern reaches of the galaxy were still thriving, primarily Warlord Zinj's Empire and Artis Kane's Pentastar alignment, the New Republic had reduced Imperial territory in the core to several strongholds with minimal access to the rest of the galaxy, thanks to the New Republic strategy of focusing on major hyperspace lanes outlined in my video covering the campaigns which brought the New Republic to this point. These remaining planets were under the leadership of Isan Isard, whose political maneuvering had undermined the prior stewards Saint Pestage and Palter Carvin. After examining other options, the New Republic had decided to approach Coruscant from the north via the Namadii Corridor, where Akbar had seized the planet Palanhi as a base of operations. The alternative, striking from Brental down the Perlimian, would have required sieging other heavily fortified core worlds like Anaxis. While the approach from Palanhi would include some traditional ship-to-ship -ship warfare and army operations, it was the actions of one squadron in particular which proved key to the success of the upcoming campaign, Wedge Antilles' Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron, whose exploits in this period are covered by the first four X-Wing novels, was formed as Rogue Flight, part of Red Squadron and led by Luke Skywalker and Wedge Antilles, after they were the only survivors from the previous iteration of Red Squadron at Yavin. After several post-Endor operations, Wedge was responsible for rebuilding the squadron with fresh pilots before their participation in the upcoming campaign to take Coruscant. Like many other New Republic starfighter units of the time, Rogue Squadron began based at Folor, a moon of the planet Kaminor. Following their reconstitution and training at Folor base, Akbar had planned to move them to a new base at the planet Tilesia. While en route, the squadron got their first test in combat together, when their first charted jump took them to the planet of Korax. Imperial Captain Ula Ilor of an interdictor called Black Asp had intercepted the famous smuggler booster Tarek's daughter, Mirax Tarek, a longtime friend of Wedge Antilles. In the ensuing battle, the rogues were able to take out the fighter escort and shields of the Black Asp, forcing it to withdraw and saving Mirax and her ship the Pulsar Skate. Two weeks later, the rogues were assigned an escort mission, a rebel customs frigate named Battle of Yavin, which had been one of the many ships surveying the political situation of the core for the New Republic. While returning, it was chased down by an Imperial strike cruiser, Havoc, at the planet Hansara. The customs frigate grounded itself to hide from the Imperial forces, which came in the form of ground troops and vehicles from the Havoc. The rogues, escorting the CR-90 corvette Eridane under Captain Affion, managed to wipe out the Imperial fighters and ground forces to rescue Battle of Yavin's crew, whom Mirax was able to extract to safety aboard the Pulsar Skate. When they finally arrived at Telesia, they became the target of a raid ordered by Imperial Intelligence Agent Curtin Lore. A squad of stormtroopers was sent to infiltrate the base and wipe out Rogue Squadron. While they were largely unsuccessful, they did manage to kill one of the twelve Rogue pilots, Lujane Forge, along with six of the base's sentries. In retaliation, the New Republic targeted nearby Sector Headquarters, the base of Admiral Devlius' forces, which included the interdictor Black Asp, and from where Curtin Lore had conducted the raid. While the New Republic was able to kill Admiral Devlia, destroy the Lancer frigate Ravager, and heavily damage the Imperial headquarters, requiring many resources to fix, they did not take the planet itself. With the squadron now experienced in combat together, they were ready to join the planned assault down the Namadi Corridor towards Coruscant. The political leadership of the New Republic, known as the Provisional Council, had approved the plan of Both and General Laren Crefay, based on spynet intelligence to attack the planet Borlaeus, codenamed Black Moon hoping victory there would allow him the honor of commanding the Coruscant assault himself. The rush nature of the plan, which involved mobilizing two Star Destroyers commanded by Admiral Gab, whose career we covered in the video about the early campaigns, Rogue Squadron's X-Wings, and General Horton Somm's Y-Wings, drew heavy criticism, particularly from Antilles and Somm. The Star Destroyers, Emancipator and Liberator, both of which had been captured at Endor, would batter down the planetary shield, opening the Y-Wings to raid the Imperial facilities with cover from Rogue Squadron. This plan, which Som and Wedge still both had misgivings about, especially the very limited preparation time, turned out to be disastrous. On top of the four ion cannons based on the planet, which Crefay had known about, 
The Imperial commander of Verdericote had secretly doubled the strength of the shields to protect the biotic weapons facility he had been running on the planet, unbeknownst to the New Republic. There had also been additional fighter support moved to the planet, making the bomber runs impossible to sustain. Crefe's overconfidence was his own downfall, with the battle costing many lives including his own and two further Rogue Squadron pilots. Following the battle, the Rogues and Commando Commander Judder Page were able to identify Black Moon as the planet Borlaeus, which they had not known before, and with further studying proposed a plan of their own. The Rogues were to hide themselves in a meteor shower approaching from the direction of one of Borlaeus's moons, before swooping in closer to the planet leaving minimal time to respond for the Imperials, taking out a power conduit and allowing the Commandos to insert and seize the Imperial base. This plan, unlike the prior one, proved to be highly successful. As the New Republic's progress through Borlaeus and towards Coruscant made the new galactic of power evident for any paying attention, other warlords began to feel the heat. Warlord Zinge, who became the primary focus of the New Republic government after Coruscant, even over Isard, attempted to stymie their advancement by striking at Borlaeus and Marist, directly along the Coruscant invasion vector, and then later, during the mission to liberate Coruscant, he hit the forward base on the Kivzor, which had acted as one of the forward bases for the push on Coruscant. While the Nakivzor raid had technically been a success, the base had already largely been abandoned, and further action by Zinj only served to elevate his threat level in the eyes of those in command. With their path to Coruscant clear, the rogues planned one final mission. The plan to liberate the planet involved the rogues being inserted with false identities to take down the planet's defenses, then allowing the fleet and ground forces to move in. To support this, they raided the planet Kessel, a penal colony famous for its spice mines freeing 16 former Black Sun members to insert along with Rogue Squadron and help destabilize the Imperials there, simultaneously liberating captured New Republic loyalists on the planet. After their insertion, the Rogues tried multiple ways to take down the planetary shields. Ultimately, they succeeded by hijacking an orbital mirror, meant to regulate the planet's weather. Incidentally, one operated on the Imperial side by a family member of the disgraced Imperial captain, Lorth Nita. By redirecting it at a planetary reservoir, they were able to evaporate the water, causing a massive electrical storm and disabling the power to the inner shields. The outer shields were taken down when rogue pilot Corin Horn destroyed another power generator in his Z-95. It was believed by his squad mates that he had impacted the building and been killed, though in reality after the run he had been captured by Imperial forces and taken aboard the Lusankia, an executor class flagship of Isard, which had been hidden within the planet's built-up cityscape. With the shields down, Akbar's fleet moved in and they were able to take out the limited defense fleet which Isard had held at Coruscant, having assumed that the planetary shield and orbital stations would be enough to hold off an assault for long enough for reinforcements to arrive. This made way for New Republic General Bren Tantor to begin landing his forces on the planet, and after a drawn out fight with Imperial Grand General Malkor Brashin, claimed the planet for the New Republic. With the shields re-enabled, Coruscant would remain safe from Imperial counterattack until Palpatine's return about three years later, and the New Republic finally established itself as a legitimate galactic government in the eyes of many who had been holding out. The deployment of a bioweapon called the Krytos virus, which targeted non-human residents of Coruscant and other planets, would make the planet prove a short-term liability to New Republic stability. Imperial leadership, though, was once again fractured. Isard would still lead a token force which would ignite the back to war, fought to alleviate the effects of the Krytos virus, while Ars Dangor reconstituted the Imperial Ruling Council on the new capital of Arinda, farther north towards the borders of the Pentastar alignment, effectively splitting the Empire in two once again. The next campaign breakdown of this type for this era will probably skip forwards to the hunt for Zinj, rather than strictly moving on in chronological order, though I may jump around to some different eras and wars as well depending on assets needed. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of the road to Coruscant, once again heavily based on maps from the Essential Atlas and Rogue Squadron series of books, along with some other references to RTS games Galactic Battlegrounds and Force Commander, whose names I've tried to throw in the last couple videos a few times whenever I could. If you've enjoyed the videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And once again, a big thank you to my team on Thrawn's Revenge for allowing me to use models from the mod to make some of these rendered stills. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.